Friends, welcome back for another episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. I am so excited to have you here, uh, partly because I love this design style. I love this so much. It's a super cool, very lush, kind of luxurious style. And the style is called Pave. And if you're familiar with jewelry, you have probably heard that term before. Pave refers to setting smaller gemstones very close together, so close together in fact that you can hardly even see the mountings for the gemstones. And so it results in this paved look. Pave is the French term for paved. And so that's what's gonna happen with the flowers. We're gonna cut them very short and we're gonna pave the surface of this arrangement with flowers. Super cool. Um, let's talk about mechanics, because you know that's important to me. Uh, we got to have a discussion about that. I basically have this bowl um, lined with some foam. Uh, the basic device that's gonna hold the flowers in place in this is foam. Um, and you'll see I have this grapevine put around the edge of the bowl. It's a very beautiful bowl with kind of a shiny finish to it. I wanted to make it feel a little more organic, a little more rustic. So that's why I wanted to put the grapevine around here. And what I did to get this grapevine is I took a grapevine wreath like this, and there's this one spiral that goes all the way around that kind of holds the thing together. You take the spiral off, just cut it with your snippers and unwind it from around the, the whole grapevine wreath. And then you take the wreath and you just pull it and when you pull it open like that, it literally will just result in these sweet little spirals of grapevine. Um, and so I just set a group of them on the top of the bowl. What I did next to hold them in place is this. I use this great product called Bind Wire. Um, it's sort of a, it's a paper coated wire, much like a bread, bread tie or something like that. So you can twist it, it holds very well. And so I use some little loops of the bind wire that attach to the grapevine and they go down to these amazing little floral devices that are called Dixon pins. And the Dixon pins are hinged in the center. They start out like this, they're hinged so you can bend them over. And those two little wooden picks that are on the end, um, we wrap the wire around the metal part, stuck the pin into the foam, the moisture in the foam, swell, it makes the pick swell up and holds it in place. So this is a pretty, I mean, there's a little bit of movement to it, but it's a pretty secure, um, way to hold the, the grapevine in place. Um, so now that we've got that there, let's start putting some flowers in. Um, and literally these flowers are going to just be cut very, very short uh, because the idea is to get them low and tight in the arrangement. Starting out with some beautiful carnations. And one of the things if we're staying true to Pave, is that when we're done and you look at this, you really shouldn't be able to tell where one carnation ends and another begins. It should be a very even surface with them. Okay. So I'm kind of following the edge of the, the bowl for a hot minute here, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna fill this in. I love the color of these carnations. Um, you'll hear me say this again. I think that carnations are probably one of the great misunderstood flowers in flower world. Um, they are super sturdy. They have a nice fragrance. They come in amazing colors. And sometimes people just don't like them. And I don't understand that because I think they're really cool. All right, so I'm gonna do this line that kind of fills up about half the bowl. Then I've got some other product I want to use to kind of make the remainder of the design. See how this kind of looks? It's, it comes off very lush, um, very kind of luxurious looking, especially depending on the types of flowers that you're using. Okay, that's good. Um, we're gonna make another line with this really cool product. Um, this flower is called Dianthus. It's called Trick Dianthus. Green Trick is the name of this one. Um, this actually is the flower. You can see that the leaves on the stem are here. Um, it is just such a fun thing to use in design world because of its texture, its shape, um, its color, all of those things. And it works beautifully for what we're doing today with this pave style. OK. 
Okay. Literally, it only took four of those to go all the way across this bowl. There we go. All right, so next up, I think I'm gonna come back and use these daisies. Um, I'm just gonna break the individual heads off because we really are gonna cut them really short and just use the heads in the design. So depending on the type of container that you're using for this, you can make this look as architectural as you want. Um, you can have very defined lines. It might be kind of fun in this round bowl to do a spiral, you know, and do the daisies in kind of a spiral over top of the carnations. Um, you can, you know, do it geometric. You can just do it, you know, in a kind of a random pattern, uh, but it can end up looking very architectural because of how tight and low the, the flowers are. One of the things I think I like so much about this design style is that when you're looking at it, it sort of encourages to look inside the arrangement. Very often you think of a container uh, like this with the arrangement coming out, um, but it's so cool that you have to kind of look inside this one to, to see it. There we go. All right, next up, let's do some Hypericum berries. Uh, Hypericum berries are commonly called coffee berry, um, a great product to use. Very sturdy, very forgiving in terms of how well it lasts. It has a little bit of foliage, which I'm going to leave on these little tufts because it's going to help kind of hide the mechanics of the foam that we're using down there. And honestly, I brought out these mums to use, but they're too big. I realize now that as I'm looking at this, it's not the right look, so I'm not going to use them. Uh, we're going to save those for something else. Okay. Do you like how this is coming together? I hope that you'll remember to, because you always do, so please ask questions, make comments. Be sure and like this, share it out with your friends. You know somebody that you think would enjoy watching this? Let them know about it. I would sure appreciate that. Yeah, those little leaves on the Hypericum really do kind of help fill in those spaces, kind of get at those little gaps that might have um, been left as a result of if we'd strip them off. This one, I'm gonna have to do that though. You know, we're getting to the point where the insertions are a little more difficult because it's so tight. They're really, they're really full in there. All right, so that's good. Now, one of the things that's really important in flower design is movement. Um, and, and I think an important part of any design is movement. So when people are looking at an arrangement, this is pretty static. You know, this doesn't really have a lot of movement about it except for the grapevine around the edge, which works beautifully to kind of help your eye move around. But I'm gonna add another product to even help further with that movement. And that's these gorgeous tulips. I am such a huge fan of tulips. And what I'm gonna do is kind of tuck those in around the side and just kind of let them lay over against the grapevine like that so that you really do get a sense of that circular motion um, that happens with these flowers and when the viewer is looking at the arrangement. Super cool. It also helps that you can just take that little bit of grapevine, lay it over top of the tulip. It'll kind of help keep things in place. And these are actually not even going down in the foam. I'm kind of tucking them in along the edge of the foam so they'll have access to the water source, um, but without worrying about the insertion. Okay, I like that. So we're gonna stop with those three. And then last but not least, 
clean off the workspace here. It's getting to the point where I can't stand it, so I have to do something about it. Last little bit of movement. We're gonna take some English Ivy. It is important that this go in the water source uh, because of how much the ivy needs water. It's one of those uh, plant materials that really does, doesn't do well when it's out of water for a long time. And you can see that I am kind of tucking this into the grapevine, so it almost looks like it's just growing there. All right, so Jason, what do you think? Are we done? I think we're done. All right, awesome. So Pave, paved surface with flower heads cut short, stems cut very short, creating a very uniform, even, very lush look. If this were sitting on your coffee table at home and you're having guests over, they would definitely be tempted to come up and look inside. It's something that really is a fun kind of arrangement to have around. So I hope you'll try that. Um, again, it's very easy in terms of skill set. Um, how hard is it to cut those flowers off and just kind of follow the surface of the foam? So play with that, play with some different types of containers um, and, and see what you can come up with. And then be sure to tag me, you know, share the picture online and tag me so I can see what you're doing. So today's urban of choice is Cooper's Craft. I don't remember how I first stumbled on Cooper's Craft, but um, it is an interesting bourbon. Um, it's 100 proof, so it does have a little bit of a kick to it. Um, Cooper's Craft comes from the name um, or from the fact that this particular distillery owns its own cooperage. A cooperage is a place where the barrels are made, the barrels that are used to age the bourbon. And so, at least as far as the information I can find, this is one of the only distilleries that owns their own cooperage. So they make their own barrels, they make their own bourbon, and they feel that it gives them complete control over the process from beginning to end. Um, and, and especially with the way that they uh, craft the barrels, the way that they char them. Um, I think there's even some, um, what do they refer to it as? Um, chiseled, they chisel the interior of the barrel after they're charred. And all of that adds to both the color and the flavors of the bourbon as it ages. Um, so for this company, they feel like it gives them complete control. They are based in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and as you can see, it's got a nice color to it, a nice caramel. Uh, we'll see what a little looks like here. We're getting ready to head back to Kentucky, so I may have to give Coopers a visit. Um, good color in the glass. You can see it's just really, really a nice sort of caramel color. Um, and remember, mouth open when you sniff. Yeah, a little apple-y maybe. That's kind of interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. Let's have a taste. Oh yeah, definitely some apple and cinnamon. Um, yeah, that's really good. Um, and I knew that I liked it. So there are a couple of different versions of Cooper's Craft that are available um, in your liquor store. Um, and I gotta tell you, one of the things that I first found appealing about it is the shape of the bottle. As a designer, I thought, that's a really cool bottle. I should try that. <laughs> Folks, this about wraps up uh, this episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Please be sure to subscribe to our videos. Please be sure to like them. I absolutely read every comment, so please make comments. Try your hand at the arrangement, post the picture, and tag me. I would love to see what you're up to. So until next time, cheers to you and to flowers. Have a good one.